and welcome to the Mad Madam Mel podcast. My name is Mel and I am a botanical yarn dyer living on the islands of Orkney off the north coast of Scotland. And I live here with my husband and our kitties and chickens and ducks and such like on a small holding. And we're now up to episode 10, I believe, of the podcast. So it's middle of, Dece middle of December, it's not middle of December, it's middle of January or near the end of January now. And we've had the post Christmas holiday. Um, after Christmas, there's always so much of a rush going on and gift knitting and such like in December that by the time I get to January, I just want to just vegetate for a couple of weeks. Also, um, my birthday's in the first, well, just over a week into the new year, and I like to kind of have a break till. Well, usually till after my birthday, but I've had a bit longer this time, and uh, we're back, back, uh, back into a routine. I'm trying to get back into a routine now. And first things first is a podcast. So, what is this podcast about? Well, it's mostly knitting, a bit of spinning, and mostly yarny stuff. Occasionally, um, when I've got new colourways, I'll show those as well. Although I haven't been dying over, no, I haven't been dying, I haven't been yarn dying over the last couple of months with Christmas and such like, so there's nothing really to show in any case. So if we crack on with the usual content, and first of all would be the finished objects. Now some finished objects I don't actually have in person because they have been sent on their merry way to their recipients, which would obviously be the Christmas gift knitting. But I did take some photos and I will insert them where appropriate in the next section, in this section. But first up we have, what have we got first? What should we go with? Let's go with my first finished object which was quite a while ago which would be um basically just a pair of vanilla socks but they are with some hand spun yarn uh yeah this is my own hand spun and there's the dress probably not the best side to show you actually probably better off shown here um i knit these on who knows what size needle um probably a three millimeter i usually knit um fingering weight socks on a 2.25 i'm quite a loose knitter so this is probably done on three millimeter but i'm not entirely sure but it's just a vanilla sock but the yarn is some yarn i spun up last year from a lucky dip pot that i got a fiber and it was a bunch of pots that i got that were different bundles of hmm, lucky dip fibre and I didn't like the combinations they'd made but I kind of re-jigged the different fibres and came up with some Christmas yarn, not Christmas, Halloween themed yarn when I put together these four colours. So we have like this lilac -y colour and the lime green and the pale orange and what looks like black but is actually like a really dark navy blue. And I'm really happy with them. I haven't worn these yet. I'm not. I don't block socks, so it'll, they look like they've just come out the wash, but they haven't. They have actually not just come off the needles, but they haven't been blocked. And the toes and heels, what I did so that I wouldn't break up the the patterning, is I've used some of my own hand dyed yarn held double. So this is fingering weight held double to get up to a, a D, around about a DK weight. And this is my amethyst colourway that I've used here, or rather an oops skin that wasn't quite right, that I kept back for myself. And I've just used that for the toes and heels. And I basically used up all the yarn that I had of the hand spun. There's 100 grams of hand spun yarn here. And consequently the socks are a bit longer than I would normally like my socks. I know a lot of people like... It, they say if to get the right length of sock you want your your sort of like ankle part of the sock to be roughly the same length as the toes part which here it's just you know just a, a smidgen over but I have big feet so if you've got like something like size 8 feet which I do that makes the ankle of the sock quite a bit longer and I don't like my socks too high up my ankles, I just they just feel uncomfortable to me. So this is a bit long, a bit longer than I would normally make my socks, but I did want them to be I didn't want to use up the yarn, that's what I'm saying. I didn't want any left over. So I don't mind and these are quite loose, they're not 
a tight loop. I haven't reduced down for the ankle or anything. So they're quite slouchy, which is really nice. So they're like a cosy pair of kind of cosy sit around the house kind of pair of socks. Although now, kind of in hindsight, um, I'm starting to think maybe I should have kept some yarn back. Now, we've, if you've been following along for a while, or if you've followed my Vlogtober and Vlogmas videos, we've been renovating our property and we've been building a kitchen. Like, we haven't had a proper kitchen since we moved in. And we put down a, a slate floor in the kitchen. And since then, and we're, the kitchen's in use now, I've been wearing, I, I wear, I don't wear slippers much anymore. I haven't got a pair of slippers at the moment and I haven't for a few months now. And I've just been wearing my hand knit socks. But since I've got the floor, every pair of my hand knit socks have now got a hole in any darning. I, yesterday was the last pair and I, I walked on the, I thought I've got a cold spot on my foot and looked and so sure enough, I had a hole in my sock. So now I have to darn every single pair of hand socks I own, I think. I don't think, there might be one knocking around somewhere. Every single pair. And some of them, the, 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 the fingering weight ones I can put down to snagging on corners of tiles. That since um, the grout has been done, I can see there's a little bit more grout on that sort of thing. But the chunkier ones, like the hand, the, I've got a pair of hand spun ones that I made. I think it's just walking on the hard floor which is more abrasive than carpet that's done it so I think I'm gonna to have to sew a pair of slippers so I have plans to sew a pair of felt slippers with like a, a leatherette bottom with just some scrap fabrics that I've got and I'm gonna to have to because they've just trashed my socks so maybe I should have kept a bit of yarn back to just in case to repair these because I don't have any left over from my other hand spun socks either. I used up all the yarn for them too. The ones with commercial yarn I do have scraps for most of them but it's... <sighs> never mind. This is... <sighs> what can what can you do? You can't do anything about it. I'll just have to make some, so some slippers. So those are my first finished object and any details like needle size and stuff will be on my Ravelry page which I've just reminds me, I do have a Ravelry page that I keep up to date pretty well and that's my project page and I, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook and such like that's Mad Madame L2 but mostly Instagram, if you want to catch me, Instagram's the place for it. So second finished object, I have got stuff scattered all around me, mostly yarn because you know Christmas and birthday but my second finished object was something i had been itching to do for a while. Something for me, it was after the Christmas gifts had been knit, which I really should do those first, but I'll do this first. And I wanted something that was for me and something that was fairly quick to knit. So I had a rummage through my stash and I was looking for something in a chunkier weight. So I had a skein of hand spun, it's all hand spun. Um, a skein of hand spun that I had done uh, probably early last year maybe. I had bought two custom uh, spinning bats from Frost Yarn, that's Nicola Frost Yarn, and I had one that I'd done in a chunkier way. No, I spun it in the summer, it was for Tudor Fleece, that was it. And I had coarse spun one of them, which was a white, pale green through green to dark green bat, and I'd coarse spun it as a gradient so that I could make something as a gradient. And it would come out at a sort of a bulky, a chunky or a bulky weight. So I decided I was going to make a shawl with it. And that's what I did. So I've made, and this hasn't been blocked either because it was put to one side and I forgot to block it. But uh, there we go. Isn't that pretty? Let me see. I can see past. I can see the camera now. <laughs> and... As you can see, it's got, it's a really deep bottle green through to pale green and white. I actually set the twist in this and some of the green leaked into the white. So it's not very white anymore. But I am going to, when I block this, is I will try to rinse some of the extra green out of that with some uh, 
some soapy water very gently obviously and I'm just trying to see if I've got yes and it's full of sparkles I'm not sure if them sparkles are going to show up on camera I'm using a studio light today because it's it's January and we live very northly and we don't get much light um you can't really see the sparkle but there is lots of fire star and silver sparkles through this as well now the pattern is one that I kind of made up on the fly um, and it's basically it's got sections of stock in it and garter and yarn over lace and just finished off with a is it surprisingly stretchy bind off Judy's surprisingly a stretchy bind off anyway on the edge so I kept it very very simple and there is yarn over in the center and there is I think I did crease increases at the edges as well now let me get this right I've made it a, it looks triangle here but it's actually it's more like a crescent triangle I'm not sure if you could arrow where it, it goes back up on itself because there wasn't much yardage with this hand spun and I wanted to get it big enough so that I could wear it sort of like this and still have the tails I've lost the tail I've lost my tail anyway so they could just come round and either pinned or knotted or whatever and still be able to wear it as a kind of a, a neck shawl because that's how I prefer to wear them so that's why I made the, the elongated triangle without losing too much of the yarn to depth so it has been increased on each end with yarn overs at each side and in the centre and I believe it's increased both on each side but only increased in the center section on the right side but not the wrong side so you get this kind of arrow shape and that's the back you're seeing there arrow shaped Sean and I'm really happy with it I love it I'm really I've got so many shawl ideas at the moment just I'm just itching to get started but you know you know what's like you've got so many things you want to cast on but you have so many things on the needles and you're like can I justify without finishing them first or you know how many things can you justify casting on when they all need the same size needle it's tricky you know switching needles on cables constantly but yeah shawl designs shawl ideas rather I've just got I've got a lot of them I, I, I just jotted them down on a sheet of paper uh, just come popping out my head like oh anyway you know what I mean um ideas were flying one night and it was just scribble 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 so that was my second oh you can really see the gradient there then that pretty is this shawl and I love it it's really bunny I love green it's not my favorite color my favorite color is red you wouldn't think about the color of the walls behind it's purple or what I'm wearing which is also purple but I'm not really actually that much of a purple person I like purple but I'm not it's not my favorite red Christmas blood red beautiful my favorite but you know this deep rich green oh I love it yeah green so my next finished objects I'm trying to think if there's any that are actually here in person possibly not I made Prezies for people, obviously. And in, I think it was the previous podcast, or probably podcast nine, I showed a pair of floral mittens that I had made for a Christmas gift, and they were purple and grey. And I shall hopefully insert a photo here somewhere. And those were made for my mum for Christmas. And I wanted to make some mittens for my nana too. My mum was going to my nana's for Christmas down in Northumberland. And originally I was going to make a different pair of mittens for her, but time was just running short. And I ended up making another pair of flora mittens. And I love the flora mittens. I have a pair for myself as well. And I made these ones 
with a pink yarn against a cream, like an ivory yarn. And I'll insert a photo of those ones here. And those ones come out lovely. I'm really happy with them. They came out a bit smaller. I was holding the yarn. The pink yarn is a very fine, I don't know if it would be a light fingering or I don't think it's as fine as a, a lace weight. I think it's a, it, it, it would be more like a light fingering and it's a crepe yarn that I had that well, I'd acquired from my sister's old stash and I can't remember where she got it from. And it's unusual, it's like what you call a crepe yarn and it's, it's kind of like, a, it looks like a braided chain, like a, like a, a necklace chain. And I held that double, triple, possibly triple. Uh, I might have, yeah, I can't remember now. It's been a while. I'll probably in my Ravelry notes. And I held that double or triple and I used uh, an ivory yarn as well. And I decided to use the pink for the background colour and the ivory for the detailing rather than the other way around. And I love how they came out. My Nana really likes them. They match all our other stuff and what have you, which is really nice. And uh, So that would be another pair of mittens. I also um, made a pair of <laughs> mittens. It was, the, you know, it was the year long, middle long. I decided to do them all right at the end of the year because I'm glutton for punishment. I'd already made the pumpkin spice mittens by Elia Skandia and I had made my own flora mittens as well. So then we had the purple floras, the pink floras, so went up to four pairs of mittens. And I decided to make another pair of mittens for a, a good friend of mine that was coming over for Boxing Day um, to eat and drink and berry and such like. And I made a pair of mittens based upon the barble hat. And I have that pattern somewhere around here. To show you that and it's in black and white but that is the barble hat the infamous barble hat that um many of you i'm sure have seen the pattern of before and this is i can never remember the name of the designer i believe it's donna smith i have it wrote down on my notes uh yes donna smith and i made a pair of mittens using the color work chart from the barble hat to make the mittens and they come out great and I was really playing yarn chicken. It was so bad that when I came to do the the last thumb I was using my trimmings from weaving in my ends to finish off the last thumb. I was I, I played yarn chicken and lost and had to salvage yarn from else like from the trimmings to finish off the last thumb. But I managed and I managed to make the, the mittens and I did them in time and all these gifts were basically down, finished down to the wire. I was finishing my Nana's mittens the night before they had to be posted. I finished the barble mittens I think on Christmas Eve, uh, ready for Boxing Day. I didn't do them on Christmas Day. Uh, everything was pretty much last minute as is usual and I should be a bit more organised. And I hope to be next year but then I hope to be every year. And that meant I had forced up to five pairs of mittens now. And for the sixth one, I actually do have them because they were for me as well. And I finished off my pair of, because I'd already done one, I'd finished off my pair of spooky Selby mittens. That's these ones. And these are designed by Lily of Nordic Stitches. Now, I kind of already started the second but. I mentioned this probably in the last podcast too, but I started these mittens and I got up to the top of the pumpkin on the first one and it was too small. And I thought, oh, shall I, I could get it on, I can fit it, but it's a bit snug. So I decided I need to go up under the needle size and originally I'd started these on a 225 millimeter. I think, is that US size one? I think, I think two millimeters is size zero. I'm not sure and it was just too small and when I'd made the pumpkin spice mittens I had done those on a 2.75 millimeter needles and they were comfortable but these had a, a, a higher stitch count uh, high 
stitch count gauge, whatever. Um, so I needed to do them on a smaller needle, but I didn't have a 2.5 millimeter needle. So I had to order one and I did. And instead of ripping this out, I started, I don't know which one's the first and second, but I did the second one in the new needle and it fit perfect. I was really pleased with them. And I'll show you. There we go. Isn't that better? You can see that much better there. There we go. A little wee spider. So I knit the second mitten, but that still meant I had to knit the first mitten again and had to rip it back. So I ripped it back and I wasn't really looking, but I hate knitting rib. I really hate knitting rib. And I had like all this rib, which looks nothing, but I have this thing, it always seems worse than it's gonna be and I don't enjoy it anyway. So back in November, I did a craft two craft fairs with my sister Charlotte. Um, she goes by Drifting Gypsy Woolcrafts, or drift, might be just Drifting Gypsy on Instagram, Drifting Drift, Drifting Gypsy Woolcrafts on Facebook, and she does knitwear hats and so on and so forth. And she was doing a craft fair, two craft fairs, on one on the Saturday, and one on the Sunday, uh, back in November and asked me if I'd come along and help out and I could put yarn on her stall, which is what I did. But craft fairs, there's a lot of kind of standing around, sitting around between, you know, between the rushes. So I took the yarn and everything to do this and I knit, I cast on and I just knit the rib when I was just kind of waiting around, uh, I knit the rib on the second mitten. And then it languished until after Christmas. And I'm thinking, mm, you know, sixth pair of mittens, it's got to be done in this year. So I finished the second mitten between Christmas and New Year. And now I have a whole pair. And I had the whole six mittens done, which I was really happy with. So yes, that was my six pairs of mittens for the year-long mitten long by Ellie of Scandia. And Christmas presents all under my belt. Really happy with that. Uh, I think we're up to uh, whips now. I think I'm pretty certain that's all of my finished objects. And whips, I'm just going to go through the two that I'm currently actually working on, not matching my UFOs. So the two whips I'm working on is, first of all, is I am working on my Uncle Sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. Knitworks, knitwear, knitwear, knitworks, yeah. On Instagram and I love this sweater and I am knitting this slightly different to what the pattern calls for in that it is a bottom-up sweater and the top of the bottom-up bottom up sweater is getting the fit right it's okay if you kind of if your shape is quite straight up and down I imagine although you still have to be careful of the length but if you're quite curvy like me, I don't want it to fit, get like nearly all the sweater done knit fit funny. I am actually knitting another one bottom up, which is the Gnarled Oak Cardigan by, um, um, Alana Dacos, I think. And it is bottom up and it's just got a, um, a cable work yoke on it, but it's straight stocking it up to that point. And it's been a UFO for so long now because it's just the thought of just knit and knit and knit and knit, stock on it forever till you get to the interesting part. I know a lot of people think, oh, some people like to do that. They like to do lots, do this, the stock on it bit first and they can look forward to the exciting bit on a yoke or such like. Me, I'm the opposite. I'm going to get bored of a project before I even get that far. I'm not a super, super speedy knitter. By the time I get to halfway up, I'm like, I can't be bothered with this anymore. It's boring. Whereas if I do the York and the interesting bit first and then do the stockinette, it's like, well, the sweater's nearly finished. All oh, it's just, let's quickly get through this stockinette and wow, we've got a sweater finished. Um, because all the, the interesting bit's done, you can see there's like half a sweater there. It gives you that incentive to finish that sweater off. So what I'm doing is the York, the colorwork York. I've done a provisional cast on. Yeah, I'm trying not to drop my stitches off my needles. I've done, so this is the bottom. Well, it's not the bottom, but this is the lower part. Provisional cast on, and I've knit a whole 50 gram ball of yarn. 
and then I've started the Colourwork York and there's very little done of it but you can see on the original design she's done this part in character of a pale beige and then these lines here in like a in a black and the here in a foxy brown and the same beige is down here well I'm not doing that obviously I'm doing an extra color in mine I think one two three yeah so I've gone for a green in these sections and in here we've got a beigey colour which is in similar in some ways to the original design and then a foxy brown for the arrows and I will show you what I mean on the picture. So um, the main body of the cardigan which you can't really see there would be the dark brown and then where these black lines are is in like a like a, a an olivey green and then where these arrows are instead of having the background colour be the dark colour and the, the beigey colour for the arrows I'm doing the beigey colour for the background and the foxy brown for the arrow shape and I'm really, I, did, I knit a swatch and I probably showed the swatch on the podcast or certainly I have on my Instagram but you can see and I'm really liking the colours it's very 70s in my opinion kind of browns and greens and such like and the, the pattern is a sweater but I will probably stick it. So what I've done is I've added in an extra repeat of the pattern and I can decide once I've got the York knit what I'm going to do. So if I'm going to stick it what I will do is where the beginning of the rounds are and where will be a jog because I've not bothered about invisible jogs like, is I will switch through the pattern around so that the, the, the beginning of the round is basically here on the middle of the, the sweater and then when I stick it that'll be hidden if I decide to keep it as a sweater I can just do like the pattern which is the beginning of the round is on the back of the shoulder although I don't like the jog on view and the most likely thing is I will stick this I'm not a big sweater wearer although I have been wearing sweatshirts around the house lately because it's cold but I prefer a cardigan but I don't know, I might keep it as a sweater, I might change my mind. It looks huge on these needles and my husband was a bit concerned and had got through the first few rows on this and he says that looks awfully big and I thought you're probably right. So I checked my gauge and I had done a gauge swatch previous. My gauge was off, my gauge was off from what my gauge swatch was. Uh, my gauge swatch was I think it was... 17 stitches per four inch and my new on, on the actual garment was coming up as 15 and a half stitches which doesn't sound much difference but it would make quite a big difference in the positive ease and this yarn is an iron weight yarn so it would make it quite a bulky jumper and I'm quite broad shouldered anyway I didn't want it to be looking like I was wearing dad's sweater when you were a little kid or something like that so I ripped it back <laughs> picked up the stitches ripped it back to the provisional and I cast on less stitches uh, not a lot less stitches but enough but it still looks quite big because of the way the yoke is it's kind of under the arms so it comes around under the arms and back out so it's not just here it's here and under and back out so it looks bigger than it actually is going to turn out but I'm really pleased with that, really enjoying it. It's quite an easy knit actually. The pattern is really straightforward. Um, the colour work is really simple. It, when you're doing a mitten, think about a mitten, you're doing um, kind of a mirror. You generally speak in here, obviously you haven't. But you, you're doing a certain amount, but then you've got to remember you've got to reverse it in the middle. So you you've got to concentrate a bit more on something like a mitten but a sweater usually you've got a certain amount of stitches will just repeat a colour repeat all the way around of I don't know maybe six eight ten twelve stitches you've got to repeat repeat and it's easy to remember that and just do a whole round so it's in a sense it's much easier to do it because you've remembered the, the pattern repeat after twice round two pattern repeat and you remember you can just keep going knitting for a while which I'm really enjoying. So yeah, that's my first whip. And my second whip is actually partly a 
acquisition as well. Now you have to excuse the rattling because I have stitch markers in here. And these these little bags, these are wonderful. These are from Amazon. I got like four. I think they're makeup bags. These are great. So for Christmas or before Christmas, I got a yarn advent calendar best things ever yarn advent calendars can I just say I'd rather have yarn every day than chocolate no I'd rather have chocolate I'd rather have both but I really like getting yarn so I ordered a yarn advent calendar back in the autumn from I think it was in the autumn from Naomi Cork let me just check this uh yeah, Naomi Cork, Naomi Cork of the Dye Shack and she's an indie yarn dyer and I ordered her advent calendar and it was going to be a Harry Potter themed one so I got all my minis and I have some of them left here that I haven't used so far um, just to show you some minis these are caked up obviously these are not mini minis lovely and they're all named after potions and charms and spells from Harry Potter. And then all the little extras were all Harry Potter themed too. So I didn't have time over Christmas to be knitting another shawl on a fingering weight and keep up with it. So I decided to go with, I'm going to knit a shawl, but I'm also going to knit some Advent socks. So what I decided to do was I calculated out how many rows for each colour I could do to make a whole pair of socks with contrasting whole toes and heels and such like and decided on four rows per colour which is what I'm doing and these is how it's coming out so far oh that one's really blowing out with the light there we go and I've done just a plain grey toes and heels to show off the other one see it a little bit better like that better, a bit better it's quite pale that one. I turn it over. Let me see. And I'm using the Hermione's appropriately the Hermione's Everyday sock, and I love this pattern. I love the texture of this sock, and it like it's just plain grey toes. I've done and the other one. I've done a heel stitch on the bottom bit and eye partridge up the back. And I'm doing these, although they're Hermione's everyday socks and which are a top down, I'm doing these toe up. So I'm just basically using the pattern repeat. A bit what I've busy is use the pattern repeat for the Hermione's everyday socks and put them into a vanilla sock pattern, a toe up one. And I'm loving these. I can't wait. I should really get these finished since I have no socks left. Um, but I suspect these will snag really bad in the kitchen, so I will have to wear slippers with them. But I really need them now. So maybe I should do that this afternoon to finish these off. Because they won't take long. I'm nearly finished the second heel. Uh, and then the pattern repeats. It's, it's really quick. Because there's only four uh, rows of each colour. You can find, well, I'll do, well, I'll do this one colour. Or I'll just, because I'm doing them two at a time on two needles. So you could do, you do like four rows on the one, I think. I'll just do the other sock as well in the same colour and then put that one away. And then it, it, it just goes really, really fast. So I don't normally knit two socks at a time, but I'm very tempted to do it again in the future, especially when there's stripes or something like that. So that is my second whip. And I love these. These are on a 225mm needle. And, oh, I forgot to show you something. It would be these little stitch markers. See, I made these. Aren't they cute? I got some little Christmas cake charms and attached them to lobster clasps and such. It made them into stitch markers. Love them. They're so cute. So, moving on from that is appropriate to move on to acquisitions and that Advent yarn calendar acquisition. But before that, I wanted to show one more finished object but it isn't knitting and that's a spinning finish object now a while back I showed this hand spun yarn let me try and get it in focus don't focus on me focus on that there we go, there we go. 
there we go anyway it's not focusing very well I showed this yarn and this was part of the tour de fleece as well and what I've done is I spun a sock yarn and it's around about DK weight ish maybe it's a little bit less maybe a sport heavy sport and one ply of this yarn is Kent Romney which is quite a long staple length it's not it's not a, f a prickly yarn but it's a tough yarn if that makes sense it's quite um, sturdy so I did one whole ply in the Kent Romney and one whole ply in Rainbow Firestar which is nylon to make a sock yarn and the Rainbow Nylon is a thinner I spun that thinner because I was using less fibre so I could get a rough 25-75% to mix for the sock yarn but when I finished it I realised I didn't have enough yardage because I hadn't taken into account that it was going to come out as a DK weight rather than a fingering weight so there's sort of like 60 grams something like that here which is not enough at a DK weight so I needed to make some more yarn before I could make some socks and I made a complementary yarn for the toes and heels with it and what I did here was use the same fibre base which is the Kent Romney and the Rainbow Firestar but I blended the fibres together with my mini carders to make a blended fibre so you don't get that the studio lights in here it's you either got blow out from the window without them or you've got blow out from the lights with them so it's the same but it's not which you're not going to be able to see or you might be able to see so it's quite a heathered yarn and I've spun this up as one whole ply and then wound it into a cake and then centre pull balled and plied from each end to make a two ply yarn and this should be more than enough to make the toes and heels and the cuff if, it, if there's leftovers for a pair of sparkly socks but the sparkle's not going to show very well it's shiny rather than sparkly and for these I'm going to make the Dumbledore's Christmas stockings with these which is by the same designer that did the Hermione's everyday socks and the name eludes me I can't remember the name of the designer but I'll try and remember to put it up on screen here so that is my last finished object but for spinning and one of my future plans as well Dumbledore's Christmas Dumbledore's, Dumbledore's Christmas Dumbledore's Christmas stockings so acquisitions that yarn advent calendar I showed you the minis but it also came with extra goodies so I'll quickly show those too so I might be a rattle here as I drag everything over it came with a coaster and um, jelly beans and a sticker by uh, this designer hand over your fairy cakes and you can see the website on the bottom there also a Felix fell I never remember how to say this just Felix Felis Felicis Felix Felicis uh, progress keeper from I can't read it in the reverse uh, front pocket studio there there we go sparkly and as a little magnet bottle of glitter there little gold glitter and we had a badge it Wingardium Leviosa not Leviosa indeed Hermione it is oh it's got a feather I thought that was a reflection it's not it's a feather and we had a little tin with Hogwarts Express on and lastly inside I'm trying not to rattle everything here this, I've got stitch, random stitch markers in there and there was this one which I love which is Harry Potter Deathly Hallows book and it is a glass one and this one is made by where's the little bag gone which is a charmed glass on Etsy 
and I believe they were all random as to which ones you got so some people got all the different books and I happened to get The Deathly Hallows which I'm really happy with I'm really pleased we watched those over between like Christmas and New Year or maybe it's just after New Year we watched all the Harry Potter movies again so they never grow old they never get old I just love them and every time I watch the end of Deathly Hallows and the film finished I'm just like it's like I can't talk for a time it's <laughs> Sad but true. We first went to see that, the pictures, the last one. And uh, me and my husband come out the cinema. And it was here up in Orkney. And we walked out the leisure centre and walked down and walked back. And I couldn't speak till I got back to the car. I was just like, I just couldn't bring myself to speak and just leave that moment. So that was <laughs> my goodies from my advent calendar. So since then, what else have we got? I got fibre and I got yarn and I got something really special called a stalker box and this video is getting much longer than I anticipated so I'm going to try and whiz through this as pos quickly as possible so I bought I got some money off my grandparents for Christmas because you know we're all still kids really and so I decided to buy yarn with it <laughs> because what else are you gonna buy it so I will show you what I got first of all which arrived in time for right, Christmas Eve, which was awesome, was this sock set that I'd seen on Etsy and I adored it. And it is this. I'm gonna have to turn most of your lights down. Bear with me. Okay, I've angled them slightly different, so hopefully that'll fix that problem. Okay, I got this sock set. Oh, that's a bit better. From Biff Sugar Yarns, and isn't that gorgeous? It's just, oh, look at them speckles. They are beautiful. I couldn't resist. It's like beautiful shades of minty blue and green, and then these pops of lime green. Let me move it back. Where's the, where's the light? There we go. Lime green and red speckles, and red contrasting yarn for the toes and heels, and it is. God, I love it. I love it so much. I can't wait to. I can't wait to cast. So I want to cast on everything, but I can't cast on everything. And I'm hope, thinking about casting on the what are they called. Um, is it Silent Night? Uh, I'm checking my plans now. Um, I've written it down somewhere. Can't find it. I think it's the Silent Night. Yes, the Silent Night socks by Lily of Nordic Stitches, which have got like little wee Christmas trees on. And I have a, um, a skin of beautiful, really deep, rich bottle green yarn with silver sparkles, which I was going to use for this pattern. But when I checked, I, I like some. Um, uh, swatch for it. The, the lace work wasn't going to show up on it because it was just too dark a colour but these this will show up really nice. So I got those and then I ordered some yarn from Cinnabar Pink and I ordered this beautiful skin oh which is <laughs> adorable and the complimentary mini skin as well go with it and that's a cinnabar pink and these in the colorway Rowanberry Lane is that one and Rowanberry Red in that one which reminds me I forgot to tell you the colorway of this one these are the North Pole sock set from Beef Sugar Yarns Also from Cinnabar Pink, I also ordered a skein of Kidmore Hair Silk in Dusky Rose, which is gorgeous. And I've got plans to hold this double with one of two of my own hand dyed yarns. I've got my, I can't remember which colourway. I've got a couple of skeins that could potentially go with, but I'm going to hold this with. And probably do a shawl. I also ordered these two little mini skins and I fell in love with these. One of them's not tied up properly because I've unraveled it since. But um, that's 
these. Aren't they pretty? Oh, just I love these colours together. So nice. And they are called Robin Redbreast. And they're from Wild Wool on Etsy. It's Wild Wool. And they both came with these little stitch markers. There's one here, it's got a little, little B. I'm not showing you the back of the front. Little B. Or is it a little butterfly? Could be a butterfly. And the other one is a little birdie. A little bird. I also ordered. I also got this skin of yarn. I've ordered some from Pixie Yarns and this was one of them. And this is Away with the Fairies. And just look at the colours on that. My husband thinks it's crazy that people, not just me, all the dyers, that dye their own yarns, also buy from other dyers. Which to me it makes perfect sense, but him doesn't because, you know, he just doesn't. <laughs> but that is gorgeous. It's just stunningly gorgeous. It's like rainbow without being like stark rainbow if that makes sense i just oh, I'd love it and just look at these blues and greens in there gorgeous so yes this is a uh, these are all fingering weight as far as i'm aware other than the mohair which is lace weight everything else is fingering weight so this is merino nylon this one i think all of the merino nylon other than the mohair but i also bought a whole bunch of they're not really mini skeins, they're kind of half skeins from uh, Felt Fusion. I bought a bunch of stuff from Felt Fusion. So, I bought, I think it's a skein missing. Now we just came in. No, it's not, it's here, it's buried. So first of all, I ordered two full skeins from Felt Fusion. I ordered the Pink Chakra and Back yarn which is a beautiful rainbow yarn it's just amazing um and that's that's actually superwash bfl i love bfl i'm i much prefer bfl to merino um especially for socks i just i just do i mean i dye merino and i dye bfl blue face leicester but i prefer personally i prefer blue face leicester so that one's in blue face leicester but I also ordered a vintage Christmas colourway, which I just love it. It's just so different. When I showed this to my sister, she says it reminds her of Hogwarts. And she's right. I think it's because of the burgundy and the kind of goldy yellow. But I'm not sure why. It reminds me of Hogwarts too, and I can't think why. If somebody can explain why. Why does this remind us of Hogwarts when it doesn't look like any of the house colours? Kind of vaguely Gryffindorish, if you include the the burgundy and the green and the burgundy and the, the gold rather I don't know it's just just does and this one's vintage Christmas and this one's on merino nylon high twist which I love I do like a high twist yarn as well I love my, my favorite yarn would be a high twist BFL which I do dye on myself because I do love BFL high twist but this is a merino high twist and I just because I just love the texture of the yarn I love the texture and I love the stitch definition of it and so that was my second full skein, but I also ordered some 50 gram skeins. Um, not really thinking, <laughs> I just liked them. So uh, I ordered a 50 gram skein of Molly, which I loved in the full, uh, the, I, I nearly bought a full skein of. Um, but then I decided I'm just going to make a pair of Molly socks. This is like Molly Weasley, these were one of her Harry Potter colorways. Um, I decided I'm going to pair the toes and heels are going to be undyed yarn of my own and I'm doing the molly for the body of the sock. See this is where I didn't think, you see the molly is on fingering weight which is fine. These three are not. These three are DQ it which is fine too. I thought oh, I'll make chunky socks. What I'll do is I'll pair, I'll like hold yarn double or order myself some DK weight base and just use undyed for the toes and heels and make a pair of socks with each of these because these are 50 grams and I will need to do the cuffs as well because 50 grams is not far on a DK weight to make socks. What I didn't take into account is that these are not sock yarn. This is 
just merino. It's no nylon in it. And it's merino. It's not a downs yarn. It's not got more hair in it. It's not got BFL. It's just merino, which is really soft and not hard wearing at all for the bottom of a pair of socks. But they're so pretty. I mean, look at that. It just looks like cartoon carrots. It's just... <laughs> I love it. This one is salamander soup, which is a bit disturbing, but it, to me it looks like carrots. And there was the flower vine, again, DK weight, again, blowing out like crazy. There we go. And there was this one, which is magma, which is all black there and all ooh, swishy, swishy colours and all reds and oranges there and it's gorgeous and these will self stripe or it'll be variegated so what I might have to do is be clever about making a pair of socks with these in that I'm going to have to just do the colour on the tops of the socks and do a nylon based sock yarn on the base which might be tricky. It might be wraps and turns. It might be, yeah. Do the tour and then knit the top of the sock in the collar and then the base of the sock in the white. Wrap and turn and then come back and do white and then the collar, wrap and turn. So it might be that all the way up the sock. At least for the sole of the sock. So I could have like cream tours cream base, cream heel, colour top and then the whole ankle in the whole colour yarn. So I might do that. It'll, do, it'll be different. It'll be it'll be interesting to do. It won't be as straightforward as just a mindless knit. But you know, it'll look really nice and they'll last a lot better. And I don't, yeah, that, that's the main thing. I don't want them to be ruined the first time I wear them, or twice wearing them. So there was those minis. And I think... That's all the yarn acquisitions. That just leaves me with fibre and a special thing as well. So first up, fibre. I ordered some fibre, uh, when would it have been? Beginning of the autumn maybe? Um, from Creative, Leandra, created by LCB. And some of them were for then and some of them were put away for Christmas. And I already showed the ones that were for then in a previous podcast. The ones that were for Christmas got put away to not be touched until Christmas. So I wasn't able to like kind of look at them and play with them. So first up was this one, which is a uh, Merino Stellina, Merino Stellina blend called Rose Mint Tea. And it's created by LCB, her card. And the yarn is this one. Isn't that lovely? That is really bonny. I'm really happy with that. So sparkly. Can't wait to make something with it. Shawl, of course. <laughs> Probably. It's really, really bonny. But, you know, I might choose something else. Second up. If we excuse the bag. Is. And these are all from Created by LCB. And I've lost the label. Where's the label gone? Now I've got to try and remember what it is. I believe it's Merino Tencel. Because I've had another one in Polworth Tencel. I don't think this is Polworth Tencel. I think it's Merino Tencel. And it's so shiny. I'll just look at the shiny on that. It's gorgeous. I love like Tencel, Sea Cell, Rose Fibre, any of those. They give this beautiful or bamboo rub, the beautiful shine, similar in some ways to silk, but it, it doesn't take the dye the same way as silk, it's, it's, it's different, it's, it's just really beautiful, it kind of reminds me of like pearl, you know the way pearl has that sheen, it reminds me of that, and I'm going to knit a shawl with this, and this will be my fruit. I'm going to just have a D Disney range of shawls, because the original pink one I had in Polworth Tencel, when it was all spun up with like pinks and lilacs and stuff, kind of reminded me of Rapunzel from Tangled. So this one's going to have to be my Elsa shawl. <laughs> because I mean, look at the colours. It's like Elsa. 
<laughs> so at this rate I'm going to have like a whole range of Disney shawls which is kind of weird but kind of fun don't know where the label is for that though and thirdly oh I found the label it is yeah it is Merino Tencel Merino Tencel and that one was a one of a kind colourway glad I got it this one, these are all one of the kinds, I think. I think rose mint tea isn't. I think that one's uh, repeatable. Yeah, that one's repeatable. This one's called Sugared Berries. Again, created by LCB. And there's this one. Oh, just, oh look at that. You can see the purple there and the brownie colour. Isn't that gorgeous? And this one. I believe is done on oatmeal BFL. Yep, oatmeal BFL and Cecil. So the white streaks is the Cecil because the dye doesn't take. And whereas in the this one with the tensile, the tensile is very, very blended through the fibre. So you don't see any white streaks. You just get this real shine effect, right? But this one, it's not as it's not been pulled through the machine as many times, it's not as highly blended. So you get the streaks, and you can see the streaks of the, of the shiny stuff. And it's done on, the main wool is oatmeal BFL, which is basically means it's blue face Leicester, but it's not white blue face Leicester fibre, it's oatmeal shade, which is kind of a beigey colour, beigey grey brown. And you get, by dyeing over the top of that, you get these really rich, deep, not deep but kind of murky versions of colours which I really like um, it can make really interesting results with yarns as well if you have like a, a hand spun yarn like a grey yarn or, or a mill spun grey yarn and then you dye over the top of one of those you'll get interesting results you won't get the if you dye a bright colour over the top you'll get rich but muted tones instead which is really really nice so that's my third fibre and I can't wait to spin with these. I'm not sure what I'm going to make with this one yet, but it's just, I just love the colours. So that brings me to the last thing. Now, I ordered for my birthday a stalker box from Nicole of Frost Yarn, the same lady that makes the, the green gradient for my shawl. And the idea is she would she'd stalk your Instagram or Facebook, whatever you happen to have, but mostly it's Instagram feed, and create a stalker box with stuff in it. Um, tailored to you. Now I post a video on my Instagram of some holographic tinsel that I'd seen in the garden centre around beginning end of November and she kind of used that as a partial base for my stocker box so I will show you what she sent. So first of all I've got a big box here. There might be some rustling here because we've got some cellophane. We got a rainbow bat for spinning it's got all these colours but the base is I'm not going to take it out because the sparks are going everywhere the base is white so when all these are spun up with it they're going to go just unbelievable these I'm looking forward to spinning this up and she sent Russell Russell edit out the sound of that because it was awful a gradient set of minis which I'm going to show which I've just dumped out into the box so they're not in any order so I'm going to try and lay them out on my hand but look at them aren't they gorgeous these are she does this kind of reverse speckle dye where she'll do like lots of ties on the arms and stuff it's really cool she's got a video on youtube on how to do it and those are superwash nylon sparkle sock base it's quite a subtle sparkle it's more like a, like a fire star sparkle in there it's really nice so there's a gradient set there and <laughs> fiber all up my nose she said there's lots of bits in here we've got we've got post-its and teas and 
that cranberry and ginger one that one is gorgeous i've had one of those we've got an acid dye dye kit uh, you get you do a questionnaire and what your hobbies are and things like that and she knows i'm a botanical dyer but that i've never used acid dyes before so she sent me uh, a little mini acid dye kit that's got acid a few acid dyes in there and citric acid and mulberry silk blending nylon and silk and oil and what else we got we've got she sent some extra fibers for me to play around on my blending board she knows it's got a blending board she's got some brightly colored fire star and we've got bamboo fiber all different colors in there and we've got all different colors silk noil in there and then we've got extra goodies so we've got some chocolate and there was also she made these handmade crackers now i get i don't think crackers are a thing in the us in the uk we have at christmas we always have like christmas crackers which you, like a you, you i'll show i've already used this but basically it's like a, a tube with two handles on the end and you pull it and there's a crack like a snap inside that goes bang and inside is usually like a little goodie like it could be anything depends how expensive your crackers are but it could anything from those little plastic mustaches that you put on or um just random stuff in it. and it's usually a really bad joke and a christmas paper hat in a cracker and she'd made homemade crackers so with goodies in uh, there's the sparkles everywhere in here the boxes they went all over my kitchen floor it's hilarious I keep finding them i found one in the bathroom the other day and in it she'd put different goodies so she put in some american sweeties sweet bars and there was a fortune teller fish which my husband was like oh my god it's a fortune i've never come across these before but he obviously has and i've got a hollow glow victoria's secrets lip gloss as well which is not going to show very well it's like holographic lip gloss top cord which is awesome so that was my stock box it's just like, so many sparkles in here the box is full of sparkles so yes those were my acquisitions this podcast is far too long i'm not happy <laughs> uh, it's like you know, watching other podcasts and i can think oh my god that's such a long podcast do i have time to fit it in so i do apologize that this has ended up being a long podcast i try not to do them this long occasionally they do hopefully the next one won't be so long because there won't be as long a gap that's the plan i'm going to be on the ball this year hopefully touch wood so let me just move these yarns and check my notes and see if I've forgotten anything. Do, 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 do. I did that. Do, 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 do. No, so finally, to let's just round, finish off. Plans for the future. Well, I have the yarn kicked up to do um, a design called the Pine Bow Pine Bow Cowl that's a mouthful by diana waller and i've had this um pattern printed off and the yarn since last march i bought them up the yarn from swansea when i was away with my mum and it's a alpaca blend yarn it's wonderfully soft it's quite a chunky cowl i don't have any, it's it's a double wrap cowl but i'm not really a double wrap cowl kind of a girl so i'll be making a single wrap cowl and adjusting the pattern it's a color work pattern and i will adjust it to suit how much yarn that i've got i have less than the pattern sits anyway and it's going to be done in like a dark green and natural color it's going to look really nice and what else do i want to make soon we've got obviously the shawls i want to knit with the advent yarn and it's i'm in some ways i'm tempted to do a stephen west shawl because they're really bright maybe i should just use it for one of my own designs i could do that i don't know we'll see also um we've been moving i'm moving my studio around um if you, you should know that i'm a, a yarn dyer botanically dye yarns and my studio is currently been 
in a, um, a large caravan on our land and uh, which is fine it's been fine but it is very cold in the winter and it gets very hot in the summer in fact in some ways it's, it's worse when it's really hot in the summer you can't really cool it down at least you can heat it up in the winter and it's kind of starting to fall down around me now it's coming to the end of its life <laughs> but now that we've moved the kitchen over into the room it's it, it's permanent home i've had a temporary kitchen set up in what is the sun lounge so i'm going to move my studio into the sun lounge hopefully within the next couple of weeks and then dive yarn production can be restarted again for the year which will be absolutely great i did an inventory yesterday of all my dyes and bases that i still have in stock and what i need to buy and such like and hopefully by the time they arrive i should be about ready for getting i can at least get started in the studio then which will be awesome um what else is there to tell you uh yeah if you haven't seen i did vlog i did part of vlogmas I started and then there was a real big push to finish the kitchen for Christmas. We were um, grouting floors the week before Christmas and, 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 and setting up temporary cupboards and worktops and uh, it, was, it was quite chaotic. So vlogmas kind of fell by the way a little bit. Um, I did film a little wee bit of footage kind of Christmas New Year time that didn't make it into Vlogmas and if I get a chance I will edit those little bits of footage together into a kind of a final Vlogmas video and add it to the Vlogmas series so if you still want to see that you still can. I will probably do it again this year coming or being well and, and be a little bit more less going on around Christmas. I really want to do lots of Christmas things and I mean to every year but we've We've always seemed to have lots of things going on. Uh, I'm trying to not do that this year. I want to be a bit more organised earlier in the year. So getting into the studio quite early on um, because I have a lot of yarns I have to produce for my local yarn shop. and that, But that's very seasonal in Orkney. I was, the season when you've got visitors to the island is very much we say in March but really it's kind of more getting on for May through to September especially July and August it gets very busy we had a lot of visitors to the island so my, I sell a lot of yarn in the summer months but I find that the, 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 the store gets out of stock quite quickly and I'm kind of playing catch up all the time so I'm trying to do get kind of on the ball and get a lot of yarn dyed earlier in the year so I don't have to have so much of a crazy weeks where I'm dying hundreds of skeins and running myself ragged and in, consequently that'll hopefully have a knock-on effect when it comes to, towards the back end of the year because I would really like to do vlogtober again and really like to do vlogmas again so hopefully fingers crossed that can happen um hopefully somebody asked me about um a sock pattern um it must have been when I was doing maybe it was a vlogtober or um one of my podcasts I'm not entirely sure but I will hopefully I might, I might actually do that somebody asked me about doing a, a sock a simple sock pattern and I might actually do that I have done patterns before for crochet but not for knitting but um I'm very tempted actually I might I might just just do that because I've had experience of doing patterns so it's not that I've never done it before I do know what I'm doing and it's just that transferring those skills over to doing writing over knitting patterns so so that might be in the future and certainly I've got 50 million shawl ideas running through my head. So, But it's just having time to do everything. You can't do everything. It's just simple as that. So yep, I hope this video has found you well and I know it's been a bit long. I am sorry about that and hopefully next time won't be quite so long because at the start I won't have the acquisitions. Um, I don't think I'll be at EYF Edinburgh Yarn Fest this year. I'm not planning to, although I didn't plan to go last year until sort of the end of February and then decided last minute to do it. So, you know, things can change, but it's probably, I'm not planning on it. I'm thinking of potentially going to Perth um, Yarn Festival in September though. So, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna plan that around visiting with my mum as well. So, fingers crossed for that. So all being well, I shall see you on the next podcast and until then, bye bye. Mm -hmm.